jungle. Good evening guys, welcome again to the Greenias Wahala program. This is our second edition and then there's still another topic, breeding as a business. So the last week we discussed um, breeding, who a breeder is and where to locate a breeder. So then uh, still under breeding as a business, we want to take training as a topic. You've heard a lot about training dogs, you've seen a lot of videos, and you've heard people say a lot of things. So today we are here with if not the only, then one of the best professionally trained and certified dog trainer in Ghana, Mr. Kenneth Singer. Kenneth, please tell us a bit about yourself. Thank you very much, Peter, for giving me this honor to come on board and at least educate people and elaborate more on dog training. Yes, my name is Kenneth Kodo Singer. I'm a professional dog trainer. I was trained in the US in every aspect of dog training. And I will explain that as we go along. And it, has, it was my passion to train dogs. And this is how it came up and become a business for me. And it, it pays to be a dog trainer. And I will go into details of all these, how I got into dog training and where I am today and what or where I want to be in the future with dog training. So that's what. Thank, th thank you very much, sir. So then I can see you have a lot of pictures uh, with certificates from the schools in the US. Wow, wow. So this is your training school? Yes, this is the training school I'm setting up. I realized that um, a lot of the young guys actually wish to become a dog trainer. I've been doing this for the past 15 years. Wow. And I think I am actually growing and I need to impact my knowledge onto the youth that are coming there so that they will, we will also have people who will be better than me and who can even take it further than I have done. And that's why I'm setting this school up so that people can come and learn to become dog trainers and continue to advance in their education in dog training to become better than I am and to raise the flag of Ghana higher. Okay, so um, let's do this. So how does one become a trainer? What does it take? What age, uh, what educational background, what qualifications do you need to have before you can become a dog trainer? Well, to become a dog trainer, um, there are no hard and fast rules of who should become a dog trainer. But the most important thing is that you should be able to read and understand. That's one of the prerequisites of you becoming a dog trainer. Because what it takes is that you need to read a lot of books concerning dog training. You need to be able to understand some of the articles that people write about dogs. So if you don't have this, then it means you'll be lacking behind. So that's why being able to read and understand is very important in dog training. Quite apart from that, I think your age is also important. You should be like above 18 where you have the right to take decisions on your own to start getting into a dog training school to learn to become a dog trainer. So this and then two, you should have a passion for it before you become a dog trainer. If you don't have a passion for it, you can't actually become a dog trainer. Okay, so um, I'd like to ask what training is about. Is it simply because I can tell my dog, get inside the cage, or sit here, or stay here? Um, is that what training is about? I mean, is that basically what training is about? Get inside, stay here, walk on the leash well enough. You know, is, is that what training is about? Tell us what training is all about, and why we should train our dogs. Yes, thank you for this question, because training is not all about tell the dog, get into your cage, sit here, blah, and all that stuff, no. Training goes beyond that, because what, in a broader sense, if somebody wants to tell you what dog training is, he's going to tell you that it's the application of behavior analysis. Analysis. Towards the environmental events to which would affect the behavior of the dog. 
So it's either to modify the behavior of the dog or to like to to let to let it more like exist in the environment. Let me explain that further. What it is is that you have to look at the dog and you analyze the dog. Why is the dog behaving this way? Okay. In this particular environment, at this particular situation, why is it? Then now what it is is that when you are able to understand why the dog is behaving that way, you have to take steps to modify that behavior to suit the needs of the environment, the needs of the owner, and the needs of the the people that live around you. More like psychological therapy. Exactly. So what it is is that now, if for instance, I get a dog and it's barking all the time. Yes. Naturally, this is how the dog feels like he has to behave. But I need to understand why is the dog barking. barking so you have to apply behavior analysis. So here, maybe one, it could be that the dog is associated with other dogs. The police are barking, he also learned to bark. So he's not a dog that barks like that, but because he's among other dogs that are barking, what would happen? He's going to learn from them and then and bark like that too. So if this is where, if you understand, then now you say, okay, so what do we do? We need probably to get him out of that environment so that he doesn't learn this behavior and become like the others. The others. You, you, you understand? Do you see some dogs too? Maybe they like to fight with other dogs. They do that because probably the environment in which they live, they live with other dogs that like to fight. So when the other dogs are fighting, even if he's not a fighting dog, you see that he will join the fighting group and probably pass the fight. Exactly. So he starts fighting. So you need to analyze this behavior in the environment in which the dog lives. Then you will now try to see how would you modify this behavior to suit the new environment that the, the new environment that the dog is or to suit the needs of the owner. Okay. okay. So this is all tra what training is yes. about. That is in detail, but on common sense, training is the process of issuing commands to the dog to ensure that the dog obeys the command and follow the series of commands that we are giving out. Okay. Interesting, interesting, interesting. So then, um, if someone calls you, hello, this is Peter. Uh, am I speaking to Mr. Kenneth Singer? Please, I need my dog to be trained. What are the basic questions you ask the, the new owner who wants his dog to be trained? Well, when the person calls, the first thing is that probably I have a dog I want to train. Then my first question to him is that, what breed of dog is it? I ask what breed of dog is it because it's going to give me inform your decision. Okay. Some information to be able to give him some better advice. advice. Yeah. So then I ask him how old is the dog? Okay. H. Then he will tell me. Then I said, okay. How long have you had the dog? Okay. Then he will tell me, oh, we've had it for maybe yesterday, today. Okay. So are there any behavior issues that you want to correct? Then he will yes. Maybe he jumps on me, maybe he's always running out of the gate, maybe he's destroying things, he's, destroying things. Things. he's chewing, he's backing in, he's okay. digging. Okay. All these are behavior issues. Okay, thank you. So now, what are you looking at having that dog praying for? Okay. Then he'll tell you, oh, maybe I want to correct the issue of he, the dog pulling on the leech when I'm taking it out for a walk. The dog not digging or the dog not running out of the gate. Probably because I'm closer to the roadside, he will run out and it get not accidentally sure. hit by a car. Sure. Sure. So when I know all these things, then I can then go further to advise. Then what I, before I advise, I will give him that okay. So what we need to do is that we need to meet and I'll personally assess the dog. Okay. So you meet first time to assess the, the dog. dog. Okay. Then I can then tell him okay. Now you can do A, B, C, D to correct this behavior. Sometimes I give free advice to clients when they give me when they tell me a behavior problem or it's an issue that is not too difficult to correct. I give them the tips as to what they can do to correct it. And some of them does it and it works for them. So in that case, probably they don't even need my services, and that is fine. Okay. Okay. That's good. That's good. 
So then how long does it take for one to become a trainer? And then what are the various categories under training? Yes. That you handle here in this year school. And in this school, I have three main categories, or three main areas that I'm gonna deal with. And one is the behavior modification, behavior modification. which when you undergo that course, you become a professional dog trainer. And then I have the decoy training, which when you undergo that, you become a decoy in agitation of dogs and training for personal protection dogs and all that stuff. Then the third one is a handler for these security agencies. I know very soon some of these security agencies like the customs, the police, the immigrations, the um, these people, the prisons, they all use dogs in their setups. So people would come and learn to be a proper dog handler. Dog handler, you are not a trainer, but you only understand how the dog works. So that is where you can apply to become a dog handler. Then you know what to do with the dog in that set up. Okay. All right, sir. So um, would you say dog training in Ghana has a future? And is it lucrative enough? Is it a venture that a young man or a young woman can say, this is what I want to do in life. I want to be a dog trainer. And do you think the person can thrive on this as a business? Thank you very much. I think this is, these are some of the questions I would like to be asked and to answer. And I meet a lot, couple of young guys sometimes when I tell them something about this dog training thing. And then they ask me, but dog training, is it something that one can live on? Is it a business? But the, the dog industry is choked. And I laugh at them. Why do I do that? Because I know that the dog industry in Ghana have not been touched in any way. What we are doing is that we are just romancing around it. We haven't touched anything yet. What we are doing as dog trainers, we have not even reached anywhere. Wow. I can tell you we haven't even reached anywhere because the dog industry with respect to training is more and more and more detailed and have a lot of areas that everybody can fit in. Let me take for instance, I am a dog trainer, behavior modification trainer. I'm a decoy and protection work. I do scent work. I do um, ability work. So now, if you take the dog training as a big thing, you can learn to become a dog trainer and decide not to go around and train for people. But what you do is that you learn to train your own dog and work with it. You can train your dog to use it to act movies. So what you do is that you contact the movie industry guys and say, look, I have a dog that I can work with and that dog can do A, B, C, D. In case you have a script and you think we can fit in, yes, we will get in there. Apart from that, you can learn the dog training business and then you use it to write books, dog training books. So all what you do is that you are writing books on dog training. You can also learn dog training and you decide to go and work for somebody who has a pet shop or who has a kennel. So you manage that place. You can also decide to learn dog training and decide, look, I want to be unique. I will go and acquire land somewhere because I know how people are passionate about their dogs. I acquire land somewhere. I make it nice as a cemetery. If you lose your dog, you can come. I give you about five feet long. Bury your dog. You can put whatever statues there. I can give you like three to four years. After that, probably we condemn the whole place. Wow. So people who lose their dog and they are so pathetic about it, concerned about it, might want to come and bury the dog there and always come there just and you make money from it. Sure. Somebody can decide to set up a daycare after having learned to become a trainer. You set up a doggy daycare where people will come and leave their dogs with you and you take care of them and then they go and then they come back and pick them up. You can set up a boarding where people are traveling, they come and leave their dogs with you. So the daycare is, is different from the boarding. boarding. 
So the daycare, they come and leave the dogs in the morning with you, and then in the evening, they come back and pick their dogs. Because these days, everybody is getting busy, and people are living in apartments. They have the dog. They don't have anybody there to take care of the dog. So they bring it to you. When they know that when the dog is with you as a professional, they are more happy and they are more sure that the dog is fine than to leave the dog in the house. Anything can happen. So this is another area quite apart from the board and whatever. Then now, we can have another area where you decide that, okay, fine. I am going to be a trainer, but what I do is that I train specifically for advertisement. So I train the dog, use the dog to create an advert and approach a company and say, look, your product, I have created this advert with my dog. Look at it, it's good. If they actually look at it and it's catching and it's very touching, they buy it from you. So you can imagine that amount of money at that time you're gonna sure. protect sure. from the company. Sure. You can also decide to train the dog and just sell it as a trained dog. And that's so much money. We have people buying dogs that are trained and they are paying extra amount of money for the dog being trained. So it's not an area that is so limited. It's an area that is not fast and big sure. that everybody can fit in there. That even people who are smart can take like three or four areas in the dog industry and work it out and they'll make their money. I have no other way, but this is my work and I'm living all right in it. I'm happy with it. I, I can't tell you that less. I've made so much from it, but I know I'm happy with what I'm doing and I'm good with that. I can see that upon all your qualifications, you have uh, videos from Caesar Milan and other great trainers. So who would you say is your mentor in uh, the dog training world? Interesting. Um, what I do is that um, I actually work based on the environment in which I live. Because Caesar Milan is my mentor. And why would I say he is my mentor? Because the environment in which I live, which is Ghana here, most of the problems that people will call you to work for them are behavior problems. Okay. That's smart. In the dog area, we have the competition area, the sporting area. But in Ghana here, we don't have that yet. Okay. Okay. So for you to survive, you have to tailor or push your weight more towards where you probably can get something doing. And that's why I am more into the behavior aspect of the dog training. And that's why Cesar Milan is like one of my mentors when it comes to looking at somebody to improve yourself. Okay. So and then, uh, on your school, how many students have passed through so far? And then how would you say uh, the progress or the willingness of the Ghanaian uh, youth or Ghanaian citizen is towards training? Are they enthused about it or you need to talk to them for days and hours and all that before they understand the need to, to, to venture into this, this version business? Um, yes, and I think a couple of guys have actually passed through my house, understanding my work, working with me, and then after which they go on their way to start something on their own. And to say I have formally trained somebody and issue a certificate, I haven't done that yet because that is on, it's on the way to come. And that's what I am preparing the place to get it up to the, the standard for it to look like the state of the art before I can start and I will start issuing. So where would you be getting their certification from? Is it from the school in the US? Yes, I have an affiliation with the school in the US that I attended. So what I will be doing is that um, after here, during the graduation, the best student from the school, I will write to the school to tell them that this is one of the best students from my school. And I am asking that they send him an acceptance letter so that if he can afford to go there and upgrade himself, that is perfect. So I will be in assistance to ensure that the person can get whatever necessary document from there to be able to go and upgrade himself more. Okay, okay, okay. Th th thank you, thank you for sharing everything with Axe and, and everything you know about dog training with us. 
But then uh, now to the viewers, um, what would you tell mommy and daddy watching this and then maybe their daughter or their son who is uh, in the university, maybe studying whatever they want to study, if it's accounting, if it's marketing, and then after seeing this video, the person tells that mom that I think I want to be a trainer. What advice do you have for mom and dad? You see, um, I have this advice to we all as parents, as brothers, as sisters. It's not all about going to school, getting the degree and all those stuff, because it's all about the interest. I have seen a, seen a lot of young guys, small, small boys, young girls, developing interest in this dog thing. And some of them, you can see that they want to be dog trainers. But sometimes parents might think, oh, why do you want to be a dog trainer? It's not a profession. Mm -hmm. But it's just that they don't understand. But the dog industry is a big industry that, yes, of course, if somebody goes into it with the right set of mind frame, he's going to live a big time life. Take, for instance, Caesar Milan. If you go to the US and you think about dog trainers who are rich, you can't go past him. Sure. He's damn rich and nothing but from this dog training thing. So it is not that people can make money from it. So I would advise parents not to be too strict on their children as to what they want to do in the future. Just leave them alone to decide where they want to be. Because where their passion is, is where they will excel more. But to try to restrict them. For instance, take for instance, if my parents were so restrictive on me and tell me that, oh, you cannot do dog training thing, I don't think I would have been a role model for people to start that. Sure. learning how to become dog trainers. Sure. And I don't think, I think a lot of dogs would have gone waste or been thrown out of the street, on the streets because they could not con control their behavior or modify their behavior to suit the needs of the people. So I think in all in all, we all have something to do. So parents will always allow their children to decide what they want to do. And they will only guide them and support them and they will get to wherever they want to get to. Thank you. So before we go, uh, what would you say about uh, pure brilliant and mixed brilliant? People, people who think that because maybe my boa bull is not aggressive enough, so I'm putting maybe a pit bull to cross hair or use a malinois to cross hair to get something that will be able to be aggressive enough. What do you have to say to them? Should they stick to pure breeding and rather look at the uh, effect of uh, dogs that can actually do the work within the lines or you think uh, mixed breeding or cross breeding is the way forward to correct this? No, you see, um, when you talk about aggression, then we, we are going details into dog training. And aggression is relative to the owner or to the trainer. Because I meet people who they tell me that, look, my dog is so aggressive, it barks. And I get there and they open the dog and the dog starts running away from me. <laughs> so he, to him, the dog is aggressive, but to me, it's, a, it's afraid. On the, other, uh, on the other hand, you will see somebody says, look, my dog is not aggressive. And he, you go and he opens the dog. The dog is not running away, but he moves towards you confidently and that stuff. That doesn't mean that that dog is not aggressive. He has the confidence. So it means that the only missing thing in there is the training to bring it out. So you can't just by your own look and say this dog is aggressive. No. That dog that didn't run away but came to you is telling you that, look, I have the confidence. I know you can't do anything. I can't do anything to you too. Yes, so he comes straight forward to you. That tells you that that dog, if he's trained, yes, of course, he can be protective. But the one that runs away has a lot of issues. But because he's in the cage, he's trying to get space as you are coming closer, so he backs. So now that they open him and he has space to run away, he's, he's gonna give you that space. So there was a time I went to one of my client house who has this huge great dance, and they are in the house, they are always backing at people who are passing by the gate, and. So one day, 
the owner met me in his friend's house where I was training the friend's dog and said, oh, me and my dogs are aggressive. I don't need to train them. Hey, in the night, they bark at people who are passing. And I looked at him and I said, oh, sure. He said, yes, my dogs, they are deadly dogs. They are aggressive. I said, are they trained? He said, no. And you are sure they are aggressive? He said, yes. Don't dare. That one, if you come. I said, okay, I want to test them. He said, really? I said, yes. So he showed me his house. So I was going, I had my suit, buy suit and everything, protective gear, the headgear on. And I said, I want to try your dog to prove something to you. So he said, okay. So when I got there, he was on the balcony. And I said, open the doors. He was actually worried. I said, don't worry, open the doors. So he asked the houseboy to go and open the doors. And he was standing in the balcony. So I knocked at the gate and the dog started barking. And they were big, big dogs, great days. The dog started barking. Then I opened the gate and they were looking at me and was why they were barking. So they tried to rush on me and then I rushed on them. And in their cage, you would think that they are, they, their cage, the entrance is like this. The two of them struggling to enter into the cage. You think there's no entrance. The man just shouted and called the wife and was like, wow. We are sleeping in our bedroom, but our legs are outside. <laughs> <laughs> the man couldn't believe it. So he said, wow, Ken, please, this one, no two ways. I beg you, start training these guys. No, 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 no. If somebody had told me this, I wouldn't believe it. So that is what it is. So it's not just about your, the fact that the dog is in the cage and his backing makes it aggressive. So people should not just base their decision on the fact that the dog is backing in the cage, it's an aggressive, so you don't need to train it. What the training does is that it builds the dog confidence to be able to withstand any intruder who is trying to force his way into your compound. He would face the person. So in that case, yes, he will fight the person and then you come in to support. That is what it is. But it's not like when you do aggressive training, the dog is going around biting people in the house. No, the dog is able to differentiate between a threat and what is not threat. And because that dog has confidence now, even when people come, he's fine. He's, yeah, because he knows what he can do. So he's calm and fine. Than maybe a dog that is just barking and you think he's aggressive. No, that's not it. So thank you so much, Mr. Kenneth Singer, and I would love to have a second session with you so that uh, we'll delve into deeper matters. Viewers, thank you for watching, thank you for subscribing, thank you for sharing the video. Hope to see you again next week, same time, with another topic. Don't forget to share the video. Thank you.